Hey, more. We're going to need a new house. Well, hello, Blue Troopers, and uh, welcome. I uh, got what may be in the running for the biggest box uh, I've ever received from uh, Glue Troopers. And uh, this is from Mr. Shimbo in Longmont, Colorado. And I believe he did email me that something was coming. I don't think I expected anything quite this big. So uh, let's see what's in it. And in accordance with what uh, one of the viewers told me who owns a lot of boxes in his job, I will slice it down the edges and make the pup tent and trim up as to not risk any of the contents. Here's a letter on top. Always makes it easiest if the letter's on top. Uh, hi Max, I've enjoyed your YouTube channel. I'm shipping you some things from my stash for yours. Some old, some new. Uh, please and uh, enclosed, please find. Ah, okay, we've got a uh, a list here and a rather impressive one. So let's uh, start with. If we're, first, let's put the sharpie pointy knifey away. This thing was like eight bucks. Is the best knives I've ever bought. They call it a mechanic's knife. All right. He has them listed here. Let's see if they come out with more of them. Oh my gosh. Okay, here is something that is hard to find these days. I think about a blast in the past. I did have one of these as a kid that I think someone else had built for me. This is the Monogram Missile Arsenal. And I can already tell you that if I do a good enough job on this, which I intend to, That'll go up on the misery shelf. Some of them have been started, like there's the snark. And uh, looks like some of them have been assembled. A few of them, though, they still need to be painted in decal, but that's it's got this base and everything. There's the, the base. And by the way, this will get built. Um, as you guys know, I'm a builder, and it's hard pressed for me to just leave something on the shelf. Okay, one thing I also might do, given that these are old decals, I might uh, scan these and, and make new ones. Uh, there's several sheets. That look, oh, looks like they're made. Huh. Looks like someone was ahead of me. Oh, that's great. Somebody actually sent me a picture of one of these that was very nicely done on, I believe it was the, the last viewer's build. Um, Okay, so uh, let's see what else we have. We have a Dragon multiple launch rocket system, the M270. This thing was uh, being played with when I was in the Army, or the idea was. I don't think it went along until long after I was out, but that is a, I always wondered how come they didn't use rockets instead of uh, cannons or, you know, guns tubes for a, a lot of stuff, and then turned out that was something they were working on, but then I realized, wait a minute, Going back like the screaming memes and the Nerval Werfer, you know, these things, the, the idea of, of, of rockets really does go back all the way to Congreve rockets, you know, back in the, like, you know, the old uh, Victorian era England. I never, I don't think I've built a dragon kit, so that'll be interesting. Ha ha! A Ravel B-25, and this is the B and C, and you guys already know I'm going to do it in the Doolittle Raiders markings. You know, it's, it's kind of cool when, when you uh, get a kit and you look at it, you instantly know what you want to do with it. And uh, that's, uh, oh, it says right there, Colonel Doolittle's Tokyo Raider. Well, that, that worked out. And I had read the bottom of the box, Max. Of course, they're, they're, they're bombing Tokyo in the cover. You think you could have figured that one out. <clears throat> yeah, if you guys have seen the movie Midway, which I did a, a review of it. it, it's got a lot going for it, a lot going against it. It's a mixed bag. But... Model Airplane Company does a better job of marking up their airplanes than in a multi-million dollar CGI movie. And they were CGI airplanes. What with the stars and bars on the wings, huh? Um, uh, let's see. Oh my God. 
Guys, this is a Holy Grail kit. This is something I have looked for and not been able to find. This is one, this is one of a handful of Holy Grail kits. It's the Hawk Beta I. The um, when they were talking about nuclear power bombers. Holy smokes. Decal sheet, it's complete. Okay, if I were going to keep a kit in the box, it would probably be this one, but I'm not going to. You'll notice it has the little parasite fighters on the tail, sticking off the tail. This is all conceptual. Um, even uh, uh, one of the TV documentaries about the nuclear bomber uh, was was talked about the, the with WS-25 or something. I think it's what they call it. I forget, or maybe it was a bomb it used. But I haven't even been able to find one of these. Holy smokes. This and the was it XF-107 Rapier, I think, were the or two of the, the ITC made, or like two of the Holy Grail kits. In fact, Alan Yuri was saying that his Rapier, which he, he that he does magnificent work, he, or he actually runs Fantastic Plastic, he was saying that uh, that was, he was looking at it when he talked to me, that, that was his Holy Grail kit. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is going over here. That's going in the vault. Man. Thank you, Robert. Ah, the History Makers. This was a History Maker series. It was a great job of uh, remarketing uh, a lot of kits. And, and because, you know, when a kit's been made for so many years, pretty much everybody that wants one has one. There aren't necessarily that many new kids coming around the block that are in the modeling. So they're like, okay, how do we get people to buy uh, a kit that we already, you know, so Ravel came up with their. History Maker series, and I think Monogram had uh, another one uh, uh, that Gulf Hawk was released as. Uh, uh, I don't think that was History Maker series. Maybe well, I have to look that up. So we have the self propelled howitzer, and of course, people always see these and think they're tanks. They're not. They're self propelled guns. And uh, this is just a self propelled howitzer. Okay. Uh, okay. The M fifty five. All right. You want to bring a lot of hurt to the battlefield, man. Was it artillery? Uh, what is it? I think it was in the movie. Uh, uh, one, one of Charlton has the Major Dundee, where I believe it was. Was it Jim Hutton? The, the same guy from the, in the, from the Green Berets and the Ellery Queen TV series. But he's an artillery officer that winds up on this post. A young lieutenant winds up on this frontier post during the Civil War with Charlton Heston. And uh, he says that uh, uh, artillery is second only to God's own thunder on the battlefield or something like that. Well, um, that, that's, what, uh, that's what he's talking about. This is the kind of vehicle that the enemy really dreads. You know, in the infantry, we always, people have fascination you know, with, uh, with the small arms, you know, the rifles, pistols, machine guns, things like that. And me too. You know, I have a couple of collectibles. And... and um, but when you get right down to it, artillery, that's, that's the beastie that, that decides the battle a lot of times. So one, you, a lot of people don't realize this, but we, when we went into uh, after Normandy invasion, we were doing quite well for about the first 15 miles or so because if we ran across an objective, you just provided it wasn't something that had Americans too close to it, you could just pick up the phone, call the Navy, and they'd be lobbing cruiser and uh, battleship shells in there. In fact, uh, in the movie The Big Red One, when it's supposed to be a one, one of their attacks, the Germans get chased off from uh, artillery fire. It turns out it's coming from a cruiser offshore. And in the book, I believe it was Iron Coffin, which is seen, is, tells the story from the German point of view, they were talking about how once Rommel wanted to pull back about 20 miles to get out from under the umbrella of naval gunfire, of course, you know who, <laughs> wouldn't let him. And uh, they lost a lot of tanks, a lot of people because of that. And that once they got into the Bacaj country and got about 20 miles inland, that's when our loss rate really started going up. Of course, we were always rolling into ambushes. Never underestimate the value of artillery. And then the 155 is the queen of battle. Oh, here's the Revell uh, Snark. This looks like a repopper. Okay. Revell Monogram Selected Subjects Program. And uh, I believe this is Jack Linwood artwork. Um, so uh, I've got that big Lindbergh 148 scale snark on my shelf uh, in the bedroom because it's too big 
to uh, go in, inside any of the cabinets. I'll fill up the whole shelf, but now I'll have something I can put on the, the shelf that will, uh, will fit. You know, I'm going to put that with the hawk. And holy smokes. Here's another one of those hard to find kits. I feel like I'm inheriting someone's college fund. And this is the Ravel Bowmark kit. And that's got the old tape on it. Uh, ground air guided missile. The history guy, I think it was, recently did a uh, thing. Um, uh, Lance Geiger, the, the guy with the bow tie. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you probably watch some of this stuff if you watch this kind of channel. And uh, they have one of the things blow up, caught fire and burned and exploded uh, at its base. Technically, the bow mark did more damage to our Air Force than anybody else's. And it looks pretty complete. This was, if I'm not mistaken, this is the system that, I don't think they ever got it to work quite right. Uh, this is the system that uh, Eisenhower got uh, Diffenbacher, Diffenbaker in Canada to buy uh, instead, so that he would uh, to talk him into putting the uh, CF-105 out of production. I think I'm going to have, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to build this and pose it with the CF-105. Maybe I should label it Adversaries. Wow, here's a big box. Oh. Oh. Ah, the mace. Terra cruiser with vehicle. All right. You're feeding my my love of missiles. Another History Maker series. Oh, this is too cool. Uh, was it Renwall also made one of these, I think? I don't think they're the same molds. I don't know. Maybe I should look that up. I'm going to have to put this over here. This the uh, Matador and Mace, and I, I know someone that worked on Mace. They were, when you look at the times, I mean, kind of nothing says Cold War like this. And you got to remember, when they were doing this, car still had tail fins. W Gundam Zero Custom New Mobile Report Gundam Wing Endless Waltz. Okay, I'm going to have to learn a little bit the, about the Gundam uh, franchise to just judge it by the box. I think this is a big deal. Let's see. Model number XXXG00W0 Pilot Hero U. Y U Y. Uh, oh, mature Gundam, <laughs> Gundanium alloy. <laughs> now we have unobtainium and Gundanium. 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 Let's call it Gundanium. Uh, general output, 3,732 kilowatts. Thruster general output, uh, you know. Uh, oh, it's got a twin buster rifle. Uh, two uh, beam sabers and a machine cannon. You had me at machine cannon. I also still have that other Gundam I have to make. Gundams actually make pretty good road builds because you don't have to bring glue or paint and you can pretty much do the whole thing on the road. In fact, maybe I should take that other gun. I've built Gundams on the road before. Maybe I should take that other Gundam with me as a road build. All right, standard check the box, make sure I'm not leaving anything in there. And since he sent me this wonderful inventory sheet, let's see if we've got everything. One Bandai Gundam Zero Custom 1 to, 60, 1 to 60, perfect grade. The perfect grade models are the ultimate in Gunpla. I told you it was special. I could just tell that by, by the box and everything. Tons of detail can be assembled without glue if you choose, uh, if you so choose. Be aware, though, that without a touch of glue, you could get notorious Bandai squeak. Well, that I'll, I'll build in the TARDIS, so that's not good. Just because the box alone is too big, but uh, that I'll build. Uh, I'm sure I'll use glue. I usually, I usually wind up having to use some glue on the Gundams. I got that Snoopy built, which I'm going to have on the desk tomorrow during the live stream, and I actually built it without any glue, and, it's, and I just took some in there because it's going to need some. It's just some of the parts, the friction fits just not tight enough. And if I remember what Pete Vetri told me before Atlantis could put that in production, they, they didn't have the uh, mold for the cowling, so I think that was the cow, they had to make their own mold. 
Uh, the Renoir Terra Cruiser with Mason Missile, not an unusual one of the repops, still a nice model. Actually, I'm kind of happy that it's not one of the originals. I won't have any guilt in building it. Uh, the uh, Renoir 8 inch self propelled howitzer. Okay, so, oh, of course. Oh, Max, you idiot. I was like, I, I thought they were. R Ravel bought the Renoir molds. That, that's one of the things that uh, uh, Lou Glaser's wife Royal did, I think it was after Lou had passed. Um, when she was running the company, because she got all the molds. So, so of course, the, the Howitzer and the, the History Maker series, those, those are old Renoir molds that were taken up by Ravel. How can I forget that? Uh, let's see, the Ravel Snark Missile, the SSP issue, uh, Ravel Beaumart. Built a repop of this one, so I'm passing on. That is an original issue. Well, I may have some heartburn about it, but I'm going to build it. And uh, the Hawk Beta I Atomic Bomber. As you mentioned, it's one of you as you mentioned, it's one of your grail kits. I happen to get a larger scale resin kit of this from Fantastic Plastic, so this one is now yours. They're great. Uh, the Ravel B25, so you're not sure the vintage, pretty old. It had a $4 price sticker. Yeah, that's uh, 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 probably about a third generation, generation issue. I think that one, I seem to remember. That's kit H285. I'll, I'll look and see when it was put out, but I think that was a reissue from the 70s or 80s. Um, and the M270A1 MLRS-135 Dragon New Armor kit. The Monogram Missile Arsenal, that's very original, from the 50s. And uh, uh, passing the incomplete kit along to you, mostly missing the clear stance of the cruise missile and the measuring stick. And the figure is broken, was assembled years ago, but needs a rebuild, including some reproduction decals and laser copies I made. Hope you enjoy these and model one. Actually, that's great. That way I won't have any guilt about building it or, or making changes to it. Oh, so P.S. Uh, have you heard of models for troops? Just sent them another stash with some Patriot missile models. Seems like a worthy cause. No, but uh, it's www.modelsfortroops.com, and I will see that. And if you guys don't mind, I'll pick a few of the models out of the stash that you have so generously given me and send it to them. And, uh, wow, this is fantastic. I did not see this coming. Well, Robert, I appreciate it. Uh, guys, I don't know what I'm going to be. I'm still working on the, on the videos and stuff. I need to go figure out exactly where I want to store these things safely and then uh, get back to work. I'm probably just going to make this part of tonight's content, or depending on how much time I have, maybe this will be tonight's content. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, <laughs> I'm leery to mention this, but in light of my little tongue-in-cheek sing-along, talk-along last night, I'm considering redoing it in more of a... Uh, with, I made that up as I went along, so some of it was pretty bad. Uh, like all of it. But uh, I'm thinking about maybe writing something down and actually doing sort of a, uh, if you guys remember the William Shatner Rocket Man skit, you know, I can't sing, I, I can't get it, but uh, maybe do it more as a talk along. Um, so uh, let well, me know if you'd like to see more of that kind of content. Anyway, guys, <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I'm going to need a moment to absorb all this and then get it put away and uh, get back to work. Guys, take care of yourselves, and as always, oh, first off, one more time, uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert. I really, really, really appreciate that. Um, and guys, as always, model one.